So what's the difference between a supercharger and a turbocharger? Knowing how they work, how they operate, will help you to choose the most appropriate upgrade for your car. And some engines are better suited to superchargers and others are better suited to turbos. So let's just have a look at how these work, what the merits are of having a supercharger or a turbo, and what happens when you fit both to your car. <laughs> So the whole idea of an engine is it's there to burn fuel and the more fuel you can get it to burn the more power it makes. In order to burn that fuel effectively you need an adequate supply of air coming into the engine as well. So forcing that air in is a good route to getting a substantial upgrade on the amount of power that an engine can produce. We're not going to talk about the technicalities of adding boost to a naturally aspirated engine. We've covered that in another video and we've got other videos coming up that go into that in more detail. We're just purely talking about how these devices operate. So all of them basically work on the principle of getting more air pressure going into the engine. So a supercharger will typically work on the crank of the engine. So there's a belt that goes from the crank of the engine round the supercharger. And as the engine rotates, the faster the engine rotate, the faster the supercharger is rotating. There's different types of supercharger out there as well. There's screw types, roots types, and they all work in a slightly different way. Some don't compress the air they just create the air moving more quickly so it's effectively compressed as it goes into the engine and others actually squish the air as it's pushed into the engine but there's not a lot of difference in real world terms between the different types of supercharger and we won't go into that in too much detail in this video there is quite a discussion to be had about different types of supercharger so basically the supercharger is mechanical it sits on top of the engine and it requires an additional belt to drive it from the engine it's relatively relatively easy to set up because the faster the engine's going the faster the supercharger is going and you've got a nice linear curve of boost going into the engine which makes it quite easy to map quite easy to set up so these are best suited for v8 engines large capacity low revving engines because you can change the gearing between the crank and the supercharger and that alters the ratio of compression and air going into the engine quite effectively please drop us a like because it really helps us to get out there we're a very small channel really appreciate all of the comments and all the feedback and all the suggestions that people make it really helps me to shape the video content and even the content on our website just to make sure that I'm covering topics that interest you and answering the questions that you want with a turbocharger you're now looking at a device that's driven by the exhaust gases so as the gases come out of the engine it basically turns a little turbine you remember the windmills you used to get at the seaside imagine two of those back to back so one is being blown by the exhaust and the other is connected by a shaft and it's connected to the intake so as one side rotates the other side is also rotating and it's pulling in fresh air to the engine so the downside of turbos is they they need a bit of speed in the engine to be effective in the first place so we would refer to that as having lag so you often don't get much boost at very low rpm ranges which is why turbochargers are not very well suited to engines that only operate in low power bands low rpm PM ranges. So turbochargers are most effective on an engine that is relatively high revving and enjoys that upper part of the RPM range. But by changing the design of the turbines on the exhaust side and on the intake side, you can certainly change the characteristics so the boost comes on a little bit earlier if you want it, or you can produce more boost at the top end. There's a lot of different technologies around with turbos now, so there's plenty of options when it comes to choosing an appropriate turbo. We've seen twin scroll turbo relatively recently becoming very mainstream and they've got lovely spool up potential there's a few technicalities to fitting them and getting them working on your engine and getting the mapping right but they're, they're a good option for most people out there so that's the difference between the supercharger and the turbocharger supercharger is mechanical it's driven by the crank its speed is directly proportional to the engine speed a turbocharger is driven by the exhaust so as the exhaust pressure goes up the boost goes up so it's not so much of a linear increase in power you get Get quite a lot at the top end and at the low end you don't get very much boost at all once that's set up in a car it works very effectively they've used it in aircraft that was where the turbo was originally developed so the turbocharger is tried and tested and most cars now from the factory come with turbochargers if you're a mercedes driver they favor the good old supercharger on most of their models which is interesting how different manufacturers just have a different approach to getting power out of their engines so can you have both well yes you can twin charge 
chargers are certainly not a new innovation. You've generally got a supercharger that comes on with the low RPM range of the engine. And then as the speed increases, you can bring the turbo on stream and get additional boost. Now there's various ways of setting this dual system up. You could have both going in parallel. You can have a series setup. And the interesting thing is that if you have the supercharger compressing the air and then it goes through the turbo, the turbo is actually compressing air that is already compressed. So if you had three PSI of compression on the supercharger and three PSI of compression on the turbocharger, you might think you get six PSI in total, but actually you get significantly more because you're compressing already compressed air. So you may well hit nine or 10 PSI in some applications just because of the effect of compound supercharging and compression as it all adds up and mounts up. Now, twin charging is quite a complex thing to set up on your engine. Volkswagen experimented with the twin charger setup on one of its 1.4 engines and it was quite effective. You had an engine that was extremely economical but produced masses of power and when it was remapped it really did sparkle. You could certainly change the, the point at which the turbo comes on stream and make significant power gains but it was dogged by problems of reliability and maintenance so they've ditched that and they're focusing more on turbos. So just to summarize then if you've got a low revving engine your typical V6 your V8 your large block engine you're better off fitting a supercharger to that which will give you boost wherever you are in the RPM range and it's relatively easy to map and set up. If you've got a higher revving engine or you just want the power in the top end of your rev range then a turbocharger is your option that will pick up on the fast exiting exhaust gases and cram even more air into your engine. So I hope this video has been useful to you. Please subscribe if you haven't done so already. We'd love you to stay tuned and keep watching our videos and I'll see you in the next video.